and welcome to this edition of Chit Chat Live. Tonight is a special feature with our guest, Mary Tedesco from Origins Italy and PBS's Genealogy Roadshow. In addition to Mary, joining us are our regulars, Jen Alford, publisher, and Terry O'Connell, executive director. Hello, ladies. How are you this evening? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. We're very, very happy that you could join us this evening. We have all sorts of things we want to know. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's really my pleasure. I love your show. I watched the chit chat before, so thank you very Aww. much again. Well, thank you. That makes us happy to know that somebody else is watching the show besides us. <laughs> hey, you're talking about my favorite show, Genealogy Roadshow. Of course, I'm watching the chit chats. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to start by saying that we loved you as an addition to the show. Having a third person, I think, really helped, you know, tell different stories, see a different perspective, learn a little bit more about um, different uh, cultures and backgrounds and stories. And, you know, I'm really curious because I think this is the first big production you've ever been on, right? That's correct. That's correct. So... Was there anything that you were really just surprised about, um, like making the making a genealogy TV show that you you thought you might have known about, but not really? You know, could it have been like you know your freedom to do things, or the hours, or you know you, what you got to pick? Did anything really just surprise you? Well, on Genealogy Roadshow, every day is surprising, I have to tell you. And, um, you know, as you said, I, I'd never done um, this type of TV production of this type of TV hosting before. So it was such an amazing learning experience for me. And really, I had the two best teachers in the world, which were Josh and Kenyatta, that, you know, would just say, oh, well, you know, do this a little more like this. Or, you know, if you did it like this, and plus all of the producers and, you know, just the wonderful PBS team around us, um, you know, everybody was really there to uh, support the newbie. That would be me uh, during this process. And I mean, really, especially Josh and Kenyatta. I mean, as you, three of you know, they're really fantastic people. Yeah. They are. And, you know, I'm glad you, you weren't necessarily hazed as the new kid on the block. <laughs> <laughs> but that one, I was not aware of it. So. <laughs> well, at least uh, it's uh, fun and entertaining and a good learning experience. It was a wonderful experience. I'd do it all over again in a heartbeat. Well, we well good. We're hoping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're hoping for a season three. That would be fantastic. Absolutely. Watch our social media for any future announcements. That's about all I can tell you right now. But just, you know, please stay tuned and watch our accounts. Good. You know, a few weeks ago, <laughs> we had between um, chit chat or who do you think you are in the end of genealogy roadshow we did a chit chat where we talked about if we got to put our mysteries on tv <laughs> these are the <laughs> ones we want solved so tell me about that i would love to hear i must have missed that chit chat <laughs> like, what, what did you say that sounds fantastic Well, I had to. I'm trying to remember which was better. <laughs> uh, well, I think the, the, the one that really calls to me is uh, my great-grandfather, Meyer Krieger. He was our first, um, he was an immigrant uh, from Belarus. And he came over and came and lived with some family. And supposedly his mother also came over at one point And... She was, um, <laughs> she was uh, supposedly there for the wedding in 1910 and then went back to, she ended up going to Israel supposedly to live out her days. Mm -hmm. And we really don't know anything else about, you know, where she ended up or, you know, where she's buried or anything like that. And so that's kind of been the big burning question of, well, did she really go back to Israel um, and, and where is, where is she buried? And, you know, was there other family? We don't know. We don't know if there were siblings. So there's a lot of different questions that are still up in the air. And though I've, I've done some homework, I, I still am pondering this one. 
That sounds like a research trip waiting to happen, Jen. I don't know. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing. It's a, it's a big trip, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be big. Oh, cool, though. What a, what a cool family mystery. I mean, you know, you've got to solve that. I mean, that's just one that I would imagine is just kind of eating at you. I mean, that's oh, so yeah. cool. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? Do you want to share yours? I can't remember which one I did. Did I do the, the Russians? You, you did a kidnapped baby. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, in Ohio, I think it was... Um, I don't remember, is 1800 time period. Um, there were, I think it was the Kerr family. There was a baby that was kidnapped by, I, they say the neighbors. Mom was um, in the hospital or something. Maybe it was early 1900s. Mom was in the hospital and she was due to come home the next day. And in the middle of the night, the neighbors that were keeping the baby up and left. And they've never, they never found the child. Wow. I would like to find poor baby Henry slash Harry, and nobody knows his real name. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, it was bad. Isn't that amazing? It just up and that is, a poor that's family. an amazing story. I know. It's sad. And I'll tell you, my um, my grandmother has two sisters that are still um, living, and that's the one thing they always ask. Can we find, you know, can we find what happened to the baby? We just want to know, and it's so heartbreaking. It's like, er, unless somebody's out there taking DNA tests and not reaching up with their family. <laughs> yeah. You know? We need to get CC more involved in this if you're yeah. going to do the of the area, you know? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, that's right. that was one of mine. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right, Shannon, your turn. Oh. <laughs> Mine dealt with uh, Irish immigrants and possible Indian raids on a B&O railroad line, a kidnapped child, and three children in an orphanage. Wow. Yeah. Is that a movie that I'll be seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Yeah. I'll near you. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so my dad, Oh my! <laughs> no Every time I talk to him, he's like, "Have you solved the Brennan family line yet?" <laughs> no, Dad. <laughs> I have not. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, believe me, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, it was his great grandfather's father and mother who were killed. And mm. he and his older brother and his baby sister were put in an orphanage. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's now, what's the, this occurring, Shannon? Uh, it occurred in, well, the mother was killed supposedly by a stray bullet walking through the tent city with the B&O tent camps. <laughs> there was uh -huh. a fight that broke out and a stray bullet hit her and killed her while, her, while the mm. father was off building a railroad line. And then he put the children in the Catholic orphanage and continued on and sent money back. And then about 10 mm -hmm. years later, they got a telegram saying that he had been killed in a railroad accident in Kansas City. Wow. So, yeah. And somehow that morphed to my, to my grandmother when she would tell the story to me as a child as it was an Indian raid. <laughs> 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 I think you need to do an episode of Chit Chat with the results of these stories because they're really phenomenal. Yeah, when we, when we eventually saw it, it <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So, Terry, did you have anything that is a burning question for Mary? Let's see. I had a couple. Uh -oh. Let's see. This was probably a big change in your career, going from just being a researcher to being a researcher who was on TV. Um, has anything changed in your life because of that? 
Uh, let's just say a lot more people recognize me at genealogy conferences. <laughs> but I would say other than that, I mean, you know, uh, not too much other than, you know, an increased kind of busyness, obviously, surrounding the show, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, just more exposure to promote kind of how uh, wonderful genealogy is. And, uh, you know, kind of things like that, because obviously we only filmed um, in 2014 for a short period of the year. So, you know, I continue to run my business, you know, before and after that period and obviously at the moment now because we're not during a uh, filming period. So, um, you know, like everyday life is, you know, basically the same. I wish I had a cooler answer for you. <laughs> You know, we do obviously interviews from time to time, all three of us, uh, you know, like on Chit Chat and, you know, in other, uh, in other outlets, which is just a joy because, you know, I really love that. Again, promoting genealogy and getting, um, you know, kind of my passion and, you know, the passion of the three of you, I know, uh, out, you know, to some other people so they can hear about it or hear a different perspective or get interested themselves and get started. So uh, to me, all of those things are, you know, really phenomenal. So do you dread doing the walk through the vendor hall at the conferences now because you know all the genealogists are going to know who you are? <laughs> no, you ladies know that I'm a people person. Yeah. I love to come up and meet people. Um, I was excited to meet the three of you. And, um, you know, I love telling people about the show. I love meeting people. And, you know, I'd ask a ton of people in the exhibitor hall, you know, what was your favorite story or you know, and of course, people gave me, you know, feedback, well, I like this, but I didn't like that, of course, which, is, you know, it comes with the territory, but um, it was, you know, like the real deal, like, what did you really think of the show? And, um, you know, I really appreciated all the feedback and, you know, there were some lovely compliments, which, you know, I'm really indebted to each individual person for giving them. Um, so, I mean, that was really, really fun. I mean, I, I loved people meeting people uh, before Genealogy Roadshow, and now it's just, you know, so much more fun. I think. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Adjusting to being a genie celebrity just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. <laughs> Well, I really wanted to hear about um, your field trips segments where you went over to Italy. Were, sure. were those already trips that you had planned and then you just had the camera guy follow you around or, or how did that work? Um, so there were uh, the, the research took place um, in July of 2014 and the segment was filmed in October of 2014. So there were actually um, two separate trips that did that. And uh, there was a fantastic camera guy, Nathan, that filmed uh, the segment in uh, my grandfather's hometown, actually, is where it was filmed, San Pietro Maida, Italy. Um, it was a little bit easier to coordinate things, as you can imagine. We know just yeah. a couple of people in that town. So um, it was filmed there, and um, it was really a joy to be able to film in a place that meant so much to me. Um, not only from a genealogical and personal perspective, but, you know, it just, I, I think it really enhanced, um, you know, that particular segment on uh, the Italian research, and it really applies to all forms of research. I mean, not that, you know, not everything is online, and sometimes, you know, you have to go to a destination. It could be, you know, obviously in this case, Italy, or it could be the next town over in Illinois or Ohio or, you know, wherever you happen to be. So, um, I think that that message is extremely important that, um, you know, not everything is online. On-site research is an integral part of what we as professional genealogists do. So um, I really hope that that message, you know, came across. And obviously it was a ton of fun to, to film and, you know, we had a, a wonderful time. And my family was involved in helping us uh, to coordinate that, which was just, you know, they had so much fun too. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, I, <laughs> well, that was his official mayoral sash. So, um, you know, we considered this obviously an official appearance. So he would wear that um, if he was doing, you know, a parade or a special event in town. And everybody agreed that that was definitely a special event. So, um, you know, we had chatted about it before and I said, oh, you know, would you mind, you know, would you mind wearing the sash? And, you know, he had brought up the idea and I said, 
that would be great. I said that would be absolutely perfect. So uh, we really appreciated that, and the mayor is just uh, you know just a wonderful guy in general, as is the you know the priest of the town. So they were obviously extremely happy to be involved in this project to you know again promote Italians going back to their roots, which would you know just so many elements of the segment. But um, you know they were excited that America could see not only their ancestral town but small town Italy. You know just it's like it's every town and that was the the kind of message it's like this is your town this is every town in italy or wherever you come from really yeah it was nice to see those trips though because i think i mean hardcore genealogists aren't necessarily the target audience of genealogy roadshow it's for everybody but still <laughs> showing that it's stop laughing jen <laughs> <laughs> but, but showing how it's more than internet research and sometimes you won't make those discoveries until you go to the archives or the library or the town courthouse or wherever the records are just seeing the different places you guys went i think was a wonderful touch to the show Thank you. I, I really appreciate the compliment. And obviously, um, you know, we were so excited about each one of those segments that the three of us did. And, um, you know, it was just pieces of things that we were very passionate about um, in each of those segments. And then just important points to, um, you know, maybe a newbie genealogist that's watching the show for the first time at their first exposure um, to say, oh, my gosh, the Family History Library is a really essential place to go. I have to put that on, you know, my list of places to go for the future. You know, kind of something like that, which I really uh, hope folks are able to take away or just, you know, just enjoy the show um, if that's what they'd like to do also. Yeah, um, I've told other people this, but uh, I watched the show with my kids. I think I've told you this before, too. So they really enjoyed it. And I have to say that my oldest thought it was fascinating that you went to Italy. Oh my God, you went to another country? Are you kidding me? And then I, I get the old of, and why are you not doing this? <laughs> and that's so, uh, you. I think, <laughs> well, first of all, I mean, thank you for, you know, watching the show with your kids. I mean, I think that that is just, you know, so important to get um, our youth involved in genealogy because, you know, it's it's not only a great, you know, and it's a fun hobby for many, but it's a great way to learn history because you're learning it in the context of your own ancestors, um, you know, or for people that maybe weren't interested before, they had a little interest. It's like, oh, well, my ancestor was in the Revolutionary War. And then, you know, you go study a lot about that regiment or that battle or something like that. So I think that you know, that kind of goes hand in hand sometimes with uh, discovery. So I love that your kids are involved as well. Yeah, and that's a lot of what we do with ours because thankfully I have two children who are very, very into history. Mm. I don't have Wonderful. to twist their arm too much to go to a museum or a battlefield or a historical exhibit or something. So one of the ways we've used genealogy in the family is they'll come to me and they'll say, did we have somebody associated? I learned this in school. Did we have somebody associated? And I think if more adults could do that with kids in their life, um, I think they'd be better off, you know, because it's really drawing a personal connection between a historical event and their family. And they, exactly. Yeah, and they might not know the answer, but you could always find out. You could always research a little bit and figure it out or talk more about it. So. Exactly. And obviously I chat a lot about, you know, the Italian side of the family, but on my mom's side, um, you know, one of the initial questions she had was, do we have an ancestor that served in the American Revolution? And that was one of our initial research goals um, to find with her paternal line. And it turns out that she did and she does. And we were able to join the DAR together and, you know, kind of put those pieces of family back together, which was just, you know, it's so fun and something really special that to this day I share with my mom. So I know exactly what you're saying, and I, I completely agree with it. Terry, did you want to share? That's exciting because my youngest just got her certificate um, in December for the DAR, and I didn't tell her it came. I went and I had it, I framed it very nicely and wrapped it up and put it under the tree. And when she opened it, she had tears down her, she's like, I'm so excited. Aww. <laughs> so wonderful, Terry. So, 
Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. My mom is next. She is definitely on my list to get in there as well. You know, she's already proven. She just has to do the paperwork, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a member of the DAR as well. And I, the easiest line for me to prove was my father's line because it was extremely easy. There was a pension record. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Love pension. But right Ex now, yeah, right now I have a supplemental going through so that my mother can join because oh. she was convinced she didn't have any. And I was like, no, you, you we'll will find someone. I'll find, trust me, we'll find one for you. <laughs> That's awesome. And I was excited because both of them are brand new Patriots. So. Oh, awesome. Which is that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal for those of you who don't know about the DAR. I mean, finding a new Patriot is awesome, but in the DAR, when you can actually submit one that has never been proven before, that's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the membership I folks that I know. <laughs> yeah, all the membership <laughs> folks that I know in Massachusetts associated with the DAR are very excited for new Patriots. Yeah, that's cool. Um, because we'll eventually get you in the DAR. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I probably do. It's just I haven't gotten that far back. Um, I have my Morse line, and I'm pretty sure that someone, you know, in that line probably served, but I haven't, I haven't gotten all the documentation nailed down. So we'll see. I, I'm not. I'm not sold on the whole, you know, joining the DAR and all of that, but um, it would be nice to know Did I for my own. I told you why I joined, right? I, um, I don't remember. I joined to prove my grandmother correct. Oh, oh that's great. You did. <laughs> it's better than trying to prove her wrong. <laughs> she had told me my entire life, you know, until the day she died. We Like a month before she died, we were still talking about how your grandfather had Revolutionary War patriots in his family. And most of the family was like, yeah, Grandma, whatever. Yeah, Grandma, whatever. And I'm like, she says they're there. I'm going to find them. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen, I cut you. Uh, no, that's awesome. Now, I'm sure that eventually um, you guys will wrangle me into joining and find out more about it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, for now, I think I have enough on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you were asking about uh, some questions. And one of the ones I wanted to ask was, did you have a favorite case that you worked on uh, as part of Genealogy Roadshow? Um, well, there were actually many. I mean, because, you know, it seems like every episode there was, you know, a new favorite case, to be quite honest with you. Um, but one of my favorites, which is actually, you know, we had a whole research team, so I'm not saying that, you know, I researched it, but a fun one to present was the Charles Montaldo case, Catch Me If You Can. Where oh, yes. He, you know, he was in one location, then he had another wife in Reno, and then he was over here and over there. And, um, you know, I had fun following that research and, uh, you know, working with our research team um, on this case. And then obviously to ultimately present the case and Graham, the guest, was just so much fun, as you guys <laughs> saw. So it just, it made it a total joy. And, you know, the entire experience was so much fun because he was really into it and where his ancestor was going. So um, that was just, that was, you know, one of the most fun ones, I would say, on the show. Yeah, I know. I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun one. I'm sure Terry particularly enjoyed it because she likes looking for ancestors who do bad things. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it that I have a few. <laughs> it keeps life more interesting, doesn't it? Absolutely. It makes the uh, research a little bit more fun. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you know, the bottom line is you don't know what you're going to find when you go, you know, you start researching your family history. You could find, you know, kind of, you know, a guy that was involved in some maybe questionable activity. So you could find, you know, a whole host of angels. You, you really don't know. Ooh, it makes it so exciting. <laughs> so a follow-up question then, um, because everybody, I'm sure, asks, but was there one that was really, really hard to present or um, 
while it might have been a good case and you enjoyed it, but it was just a little on the difficult side, either from research or motion or um, Let me think about that. That is, that's a really, really fantastic question. Um, let's say, if you remember uh, Mrs. Dassenbrock, who was the elderly lady uh, who came with her son, Tim Dassenbrock. This was on one of the St. Louis episodes. I love um, that one. But she didn't know a lot about her family history. So I would say, you know, from an emotional perspective, um, you know, kind of presenting to somebody who, you know, really reminded me of my grandma in a way um, and just telling her this information that she was just so enthusiastic to receive and just to know. And you could tell that she was almost relieved when, you know, she found out this information because she'd been wondering, you know, she's, you know, an 88 year old lady. She'd been wondering for so many years about certain things in her family history. And, um, you know, it, it, you know, there was a lot of hugging and so forth that, you know, was kind of off camera, but th there was a lot of emotion there. And um, it was a very, very special case. And that lady is just so incredibly special. It was really my honor to present all, all the cases, but especially to Mrs. Dassenbrock, who was an elderly lady. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I cry every time I see it too. I mean, it's just, you know, I tear up too. It's, it's just, she was just such a wonderful lady. She really stole the whole show. In my, in my opinion, I think, you know, I think she was just, you know, the, the cutest person ever. I really do. Oh, yeah. I totally agree with you. And I think her son was just amazing. The way yeah, he was so sweet. Him, yeah. He was a true gentleman. He, you know, true, true gentleman, I think is the best way to describe him. I kind of, <laughs> somebody's helping them do this is when he looked at her and said you had a brother mm -hmm. um, or an uncle I'm sorry you had an uncle um, I kind of want to know if if they found somebody to help them find living and yeah. living descendants from them well, the answer to that question is, I believe so. Now, obviously, I can't, you know, share too many details about that, but I believe that, you know, things were heading in that direction. Oh, good. That's good to know. That's good to hear. I think that's one thing that a lot of people, after these shows are done, you're always like, gosh, I wonder, I wonder if, or this is what I would like to have done, or did they do the follow-up research, and... Sometimes I'm like, I'm sorry, Shannon, I, I, I'm breaking up. Am I breaking up? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I will repeat. Okay. I'm sorry, Shannon, you're, you're breaking up. Oh, we're good. We can start over. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Yeah, I didn't hear your question. Sorry. Nope, that's fine. <laughs> I said, I think that's a lot of what a lot of people wonder is after the show, did they continue research? Did they find family? You know, were there more conclusions afterwards? And sometimes I think that's when maybe it would be wonderful on the website to have a follow-up section. <laughs> that is a fantastic suggestion that I will definitely pass along. It's That's a really great suggestion. I mean, obviously we don't have, we're not doing that yet, but, um, you know, again, it's a great suggestion and, you know, I'll definitely pass that along and, um, We'll see what happens, but that's that's a great idea. Or if any of them are willing to talk, we're willing to talk with them. <laughs> we will need more chit chat once we get these gaps. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'd be happy to forward your request along to people. Absolutely. You're very sweet. All right. We'll talk. <laughs> I would, I would love to know. Tell me about the beginnings of the in-depth genealogy. Oh, that's all Terry. <laughs> Terry gets to tell this. Terry's the beginner. I would love to hear about that. <laughs> okay, so in the beginning, we'll start it like a fairy tale. Um, yeah, right. Once upon a time, um, one of our friends, our genealogy friends, um, Stephanie Pitcher Fishman, had a. Like, it was like a newsletter that she was putting together on her website, Corn and, Corn and Cotton Genealogy. And we kind of started from there. And it was, she just had a few friends that were writing on different subjects. And she was, you know, um, sending it out. And I talked to her one day and I was like, you know, we could do so much more. We could do so much more. So 
we sent out an email to everybody that was writing and we're like, you know, we're kind of thinking we can do more with this. We're looking for a different name. And Jen here, what was the one you put in, Jen? It, the in, uh, wait, the depth of the field. Yeah, depth of the field. That's depth what I came up with. So Stephen and I took that and we we're like, all right, we like depth. <laughs> <laughs> I like in depth. And we kind of like played around with it and came up with in-depth genealogist. And the day we decided that's what we wanted, we went and covered social media so that nobody could get the name. Uh, <laughs> that's very smart. I just want to tell you that's a smart move. <laughs> if we covered everything. <laughs> um, and then within a week, we had a website up and running. Um, and it just it started as a, as a newsletter. We continued going that route with the back of our minds was we wanted to do a digital magazine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we did the news or the uh, the newsletter for about a, maybe a year, a year and a half. And I was like, OK, we're really we got to do this because anybody can write articles, put them on their website and group them all together in a newsletter and send out these links. But let's let's be different. Let's let's do this. Um, so then we pulled some more people onto, you know, into the company so that we could create because Obviously, it takes a lot of time to do this, to find the writers, do the, all the editing, do all the formatting, putting it together, emailing it out is, was a ton of work. So that's pretty much how we started and kept going. Um, obviously, we've had some changeover within the group of people who are doing it. Stephanie has moved on to different things. She's writing books now, um, you know, loosely based on her genealogy. So those are really cool. Um, and we've had some others who've just stepped away because they had other things that came up or better opportunities. But the four or the three of us, I can't even count today. The three of us are really excited. We have a lot of great things that we're thinking for the future that we're working towards. And, you know, we are definitely going to be around for a while. Awesome. Quite a while. <laughs> what a great story. That's fantastic. Thank you. Our yeah. first magazine went live in February 2013, and here we are in 2015, and this, we have over 20 writers writing for us, and we have a subscription-based magazine and a YouTube channel and more and more <laughs> things happening every day. So, yeah. And, and what's cool is that we're, we're, we're going global. It's, we don't want to be U.S.-focused. So many of our writers are here in the U.S. We've added Australia. We've added Germany. Um, we are going to do um, Latin America. Mexico. Yeah, Latin America. Yeah. Uh, so we are really looking to keep moving it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of exciting things are coming up, ladies. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. I guess I'll have to stay tuned to chit chat to find Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, do either of you have one last question for? I've got one, and my favorite one is, if you could give one piece of advice to a newbie professional, what would that be? A newbie professional. I love the question, first of all. Um, but I would say be a sponge. Learn everything you possibly can. Attend seminars, conferences, um, you know, find a mentor. Find somebody that you really admire within the field and just say, hey, you know, do you mind if I, you know, come out in the field with you? Or you know, can you chat with me for maybe half an hour a month or something like that and give me your advice? Um, just learn everything you possibly can. a better professional genealogist bottom line i love that you brought up mentoring because that's one that um, a lot of people don't discuss but everybody has a different view on it there are the genealogists who will quietly do it from the background and not really say you know let me help you or they'll just you know oh, i saw you're doing this and i think you could do this a little better by doing it this way um, and then there are those who are, yeah, you know, I'm willing to sit and chat with you and, and help guide you in the right direction. So that's great. Right. Well, I just wish all the, you know, young new professionals, you know, the best of luck. And I look forward to seeing you at future conferences. <laughs> She's very friendly. Just walk 
walk right up to her. Trust me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a people. I'm a people person. Wait, we saw her across the room and we're like, Mary! <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. And I already knew who you ladies were, so it was no problem. <laughs> As we saw you come in, we're like, she can't leave. We got to grab her. <laughs> we had a plan. <laughs> and here I am on the chit chat. So there you go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, but thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Oh, we're very happy you agreed to talk to us. It was a lot of fun this evening. Thank you so much for joining. Anytime. Anytime. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you to each of you. I appreciate that. You're thank you. Welcome. Anytime you want to come back on, you just let us know. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> and that will be it for this evening, unfortunately. We've reached our 30-minute mark. But hopefully everyone out there in YouTube land will join us in, in the future. Please make sure to check out our Facebook page. Go out and like us and on, follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Check out the website, www.theindepthgenealogist.com, or just send us an email at editor at theindepthgenealogist.com. And on that note, thank you for joining us today. We hope you have a great day going in-depth with all of your ancestors.